Good evening. Welcome to News 12 at 6. I'm Brittany Harlow. A house fire in Love County last night leaves a ranch home destroyed along with five cars. News 12's Andrew Freeman is live at the home. Andrew, what's left? Brittany, this was the garage of the Loomis Ranch, and this was one of two Corvettes that was housed there. A fire last night destroyed the home and five cars, causing hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. But the homeowners say the important thing is they're safe, all because of a photography expedition they set out on on a whim. Thank you, Andrew. New information tonight on a woman found dead in a Denison home earlier this week. Denison police tell us the body of Tina White showed no obvious cause of death. There were no gunshot or stab wounds or signs of a physical struggle. Police tell us White's roommate found her body in their Day Street home on Tuesday. No one has been arrested. White's body has been sent to the medical examiner in Dallas for an autopsy. A man is accused of swerving into a truck in Atoka County, causing it to flip and then leaving the scene with his passenger. 20-year-old Jerry Vincent and 19-year-old Tristan Petty John were arrested for leaving the scene of an accident involving injury. OHP says Vincent swerved into the side of a truck driven by 26-year-old John Hill, causing it to overturn multiple times. Hill is accused of driving under the influence and was flown to TMC. The report says Vincent, Petty John, and his two other passengers left the scene, but the two later turned themselves in. A man accused of kidnapping a Kansas mother may be headed south to Texas. Our sister station in Topeka tells us 38-year-old Pedro Enriquez has ties to San Antonio and Mexico, and authorities think he may be headed south on 35, trying to flee the country. He's accused of grabbing 33-year-old Viviana Vasquez by the hair, putting her into a silver PT Cruiser, and then driving off. The car has Kansas tags 057JJU. If you see him, or this car, call 911. Two teens accused of making threats towards Tioga schools have been indicted. Police say 18-year-old J.P. Hoffman and 17-year-old Alan Shipman, along with two other teens, talked about shooting up the school on social media. Hoffman and Shipman face charges of making a terroristic threat and will be tried as adults. The other two teens were not charged. Turning to weather, a pretty start to the weekend. Steve Lenore is here with your overnight forecast. Steve? Tough not to smile on a beautiful day like this. Now, we had a batch of thunderstorms come by. We talked about that last night. They had just grazed our western counties, Montague, Cook, parts of Carter, even gracing any some rain. That has come and gone, though, looking for a dry evening out there. And temperatures are not bad for a June 9th, generally in the low 80s to upper 70s, about 5 degrees below the average. Now, wind has been a bit brisk today out of the southeast, running about 15 miles per hour, a few gusts to about 20. That wind will ease off a little bit tonight. Now, tomorrow, though, it's going to be a sunny, windy, and hot day with 90 degrees. We'll be talking about how long the little mini heat wave is going to last and have all your numbers, of course, for the weekend when I come back. Thanks, Steve. Well, the Grayson County Fire Marshal will soon have a new boss. News 12 has learned the Grayson County Fire Marshal will start reporting to the Sheriff's Office. That position has been under the County Office of Emergency Management, but sources tell us the Fire Marshal will start reporting to Grayson County's Chief Deputy. County Judge Bill Majors tells us they plan to iron out the details at Commissioner's Court on Tuesday. It's a political he said, she said, and it's reaching new heights today in Washington. The White House and President Trump are dropping the gloves after former FBI Director James Comey's explosive testimony on Capitol Hill. Scott McLean reports. President Trump is a counterpuncher, and on Friday he hit back at James Comey Thank you very hard. Much. Breaking his brief silence on Twitter, Trump claimed vindication on the Russia probe and called James Comey a leaker. Bond has been denied for the NSA contractor accused of leaking government secrets. The government says reality winner caused exceptionally grave damage to national security when she allegedly passed a classified document to a news outlet. The Department of Justice says winner has admitted to taking a top secret intelligent document from her employer, which details hacking by the Russian military intelligence. Inside her Georgia home, agents found handwritten notes, including one where she allegedly said, I want to burn the White House down. 
The stunning election result in Britain has ended with a hung government, but the Prime Minister says she will not resign. Prime Minister Theresa May had hoped to increase her party's majority in Parliament, strengthening her leadership. Instead, it has been a disaster. The Conservatives won the most seats but lost the overall majority, and that's all that counts in British politics. May will have to rely on another party to create a government. It's the biggest crisis in British politics in years, and the leader of the opposition, Labour Party, was quick to blame the Prime Minister. It was her decision to call the election, it was her name out there, and she was saying she was doing it to bring about strong and stable government. This could impact the country's negotiations to leave the European Union. This year, it's so much better. Still ahead on News 12, a once popular Lake Texoma beach is brought back to life. Who is behind the renovations and what locals have to say. Plus, a former Sherman Bearcats head coach back on the sidelines, taking over another Texoma team.